The number three offensive lineman on the MT Top 40 would be a surefire member of the Montana State Mount Rushmore, arguably the face of the program from his All-American playing days to the national championship won as a coach. Number three O-lineman on the MT Top 40 is Butte's Sonny Holland. There's a lot of names in, in the athletic history of Montana State that are iconic, so to speak. There's not very many of them, I mean, but he's certainly one of those guys, a Max Worthington, a Sonny Holland, a Brick Breeden, um, those types of guys. I mean, he's, he's in that group. And like I say, that group's not very big. From a player, to an assistant coach, to a head coach, director of the Alumni Association, um, just a, a, a great, great ambassador for Montana State, not just the athletic department. And, and he's so well respected, not only in Bozeman, but throughout um, MSU and, and the whole state of Montana. Holland was a three-sport standout at Butte in the 1950s, playing hoops and running track while also starring on the football team before he landed at Montana State and found immediate success. A freshman captain, starting at center and linebacker, helped guide the Cats to the NAIA National Championship. It was just a glorious year, actually. He ended up playing in the National Championship and uh, something that, uh, you know, was way out there as far as something that would ever be, a, I'd be a part of, but it, uh, it developed and we had a great year and things came together and we just responded to each other and it was an exciting time for us, for sure. Three times he was All-American and lost only six games in four years in the program. Holland was selected to compete in the 1959 East-West game and is number 52 has since been retired at MSU. I always wanted to be a Bobcat. That was a big part of my upbringing. It was something that was really important to me and uh, I just uh, felt like that's I was going to be a Bobcat from the beginning. There was never a doubt in my mind and as it turned out, that's the way it was. Holland hopped right into coaching out of the playing days, serving as an assistant to Tom LaProuse and Bozeman, then joining the staff at MSU. He returned to the high school ranks, coaching at Great Falls. Then there was a trip to Washington State and what's now known as Montana Western before he returned where it all began at Montana State in 1970 and became the head coach of the Bobcats in 1971. It's just what you said. It was a tr extremely exciting and uh, was made possible by opportunities that happened along the way that I jumped on and uh, it all seemed to fit together for me. Everything I did seemed to be pointed to the future as far as Montana State was concerned. And as it turned out, that's where it all ended up. He instantly had credibility when, when, when you met him and, and when he was out recruiting and um, He's a good storyteller, a believable guy, um, a guy that had a different way of motivating than some other coaches. I mean, he, not that he wouldn't yell and scream and get excited a lot of times, but a lot of times he didn't have to raise his voice, and he could get the, he could get the players ready to go. And um, he, he was a man of few words from the standpoint, you know, he, he didn't ramble and ramble and ramble on, but what he said was on point, and uh, he, had, he had the ability, the unique ability, to say the right things at the right time with the right inflection, and you better open the door because it's time to go play. After a 2-7-1 and one campaign in his first season, Holland mentored the Cats to six straight winning seasons, including this, the 1976 National Championship and during that 12 and 1 campaign, MSU would defeat Akron 24 to 13 for the Division II national title. I think the records will back me up on this that we kind of came from behind. I don't know how many games there in one stretch, but there were a number of games that we were behind and we came out the victor and and, and you do that by kids working hard every day in practice and uh, realizing that the practice isn't over uh, when you hang it up and go in the locker room. You just constantly preach togetherness and team and being number one 
uh, that it has to be on the table every day. And uh, something that uh, we made extremely important to the kids and they, they picked up on it and carried the ball. Holland stepped down after the 1977 season, the winningest coach in MSU history at the time, 47 wins, 27 losses, and a tie. Rob Ash has since surpassed that win total, leaving Holland number two in program history. He was then inducted into the Montana State Hall of Fame in 1986, the Butte Sports Hall of Fame in 1989, and in 2016, the Montana Football Hall of Fame. Also in 2016, MSU would unveil a bronze statue of Holland right outside Bobcat Stadium. They're all extremely uh, something that is uh, a gift that comes with success. It's a part of, it's an identification with, an, with, a, with a, a group of young people uh, being a part of, of every day having success and working working for success. The face of Montana State, you still see him on the sidelines to this day, Sonny Holland, the number three offensive lineman in Montana's history. Stick with MontanaSports.com and your MTN stations as we continue counting down number two and number one on Thursday and Friday. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.